The next section of the textbook is determining formulas. So once we have the empirical formula, then we're going to find the molecular formula. Okay, so the empirical formula is the subscripts written in the smallest whole number. Okay, whereas the molecular formula tells us exactly how many atoms are present. Um, both can be uh, obtained from the percent composition of a molecule. But for the molecular formula, you must know both the empirical formula and the molecular weight of a compound. So this figure here shows you, I have the compound, the empirical formula, the molecular formula, and the molecular model. I'm not going to pay attention to this one. But the empirical formula, see how there's one carbon and one hydrogen, okay? Whereas the molecular formula, it's two and two. So the number that I can divide both of these by is two. So from the molecular formula, I divide both by two to get the empirical formula of one carbon and one hydrogen. Or if I have benzene, which also has an empirical formula of C and H. If I multiply all of it by six, then I end up with C6H6, which is its molecular formula. So I can go in either direction. I can find the empirical formula from the molecular formula, or if I have this multiplier, which we're going to call N, I can go from empirical formula to molecular formula. So <clears throat> the way that I do this is I obtain the empirical formula from the percent composition. So I know the mass of each composition, or I take the, the percentages given and just make them grams. Take each mass and divide by each atom's molar mass. Then divide all the components from number two by the smollest answer I got in number two. And then if I don't have an even number, then I need to um, multiply it by some number, okay? So basically, um, if I end up with, um, I'm just gonna put a generic X, X.5, okay? That's equal to X and one half, okay? So one half, then I would have to multiply by two, okay? If I have x.333, there. The 0.333 is what fraction? That's x and one third. So again, I would need to multiply by the denominator of three. Uh, if I have x is 0 0.667, Okay, that's the same as saying x and two-thirds. I think this is an eraser. Yep. Okay. Thirds. Okay. So again, I want to multiply by three. Okay. Um, I could have x point two five. Okay, two five is the one fourth fraction. So therefore, I would multiply by four. You see a theme here? I'm taking whatever the, the number is here, and that's what I'm multiplying by, okay? But you need to know that this decimal place, because this is what the calculator is going to give you, is this fraction, okay? Uh, the next one will be x.5, which we already did. So the next one is x.75, which is x and three quarters, okay? I'm ignoring the fact that it's three. I'm just multiplying by the denominator, which is four. And the last, the smallest that we're going to worry about getting, which I haven't seen very much of, is x.20. And um, that would be x and one-fifth. So therefore, I multiply by 5. x.40 is x.25. So I multiply again by 5. So if these fractions to decimals are not familiar with you, you need to learn those, okay? Uh, the farthest we're going to go, the highest numerator, denominator we're going to go to is 5. So x.60 is x, and that's 3 fifths. So again, I multiply by 5. And x.80 is x4 fifths. So it's time, also times 5. Okay. If my x.yy is plus or minus 0 0.1, okay? Which means that if I had 3.91, I 
okay, or 4.09 round to that nearest whole number. of for this one would be four. Okay. So basically this plus or minus 0.1 and I didn't this is actually 0.09, but basically if it's between 0.9 and 0.1, then I round to the nearest whole number. If it's other than that, you probably need to be looking at a fraction. Okay. But the next one is not to 0.2. So if you're more than off than that, you probably have made a mistake somewhere. Okay. So here's a problem. Okay, so I'm going to take the masses given and I'm going to make those grams. So I'm going to take the 65.4% carbon and I'll make that 65.4 grams of carbon. I'm going to take the 5.5%, just make it of grams, 5.5 grams of hydrogen and the 29.1 and grams of oxygen. Second step is to divide each by its molar mass. So carbon is 12.01, that's off the periodic table. And when I do that, I get 5.445. You want to keep four significant figures when you do this. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.01. .01, so that's 5.446. And oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. So this is 1.8. 819. Okay. The next step is to divide each of these by the smallest number. Which one of these three is the smallest number? It's this one. So I'm going to divide all of them by the smallest number of 1.819 divided by 1.819 and divided by 1.819. This one's one. Okay. This one gives me 2.99. Okay. I'm within that point with plus or minus 0 0.1, so that becomes 3. This one becomes also 2.99. And again, it's 3. So the empirical formula for this is C3, because it's carbon to 3. Hydrogen is 3. And oxygen is 1, which I don't have to write, but if you do write, you get to put a 1 there. Okay. And this is the empirical formula for hydroquinone. Okay? And this will be the end of this video, and I'll do the second part in the next video.